recording Facebook Live. Hello, everybody. Pete Caliendo. Today we are going from softball to baseball to see how we can learn from each other and what a better way to do that with the coach that has coached at every level. I think he's the only coach that's coached at every level all the way to professional baseball and to, in both sports. This is going to be a great show. But before we start, don't forget, check us out, Baseball Outside the Box. Welcome all our listeners to Facebook Live. If you have any questions for Matt, I'll introduce Matt in a second. Please type it down at the bottom in the comments, and we will get those questions in. We've got a lot of great things for the show today. And Matt, let me tell you, he is... The Internet Man, 700,000 followers, the most followed coach on the Internet, baseball and softball. But he's got a tremendous amount of background when it comes to coaching. Currently the assistant softball coach at Fresno State University. Um, let me just jump in, and then later on we'll get into it. But, oh, wait, how could Coach Caliendo forget this one? You go back to June 7th, 2018 on the podcast. I just interviewed... Um, Jim Rushford, a great a major league player, great perseverance story that made it to the big leagues. Uh, the odds were definitely against him. But let me tell you, I got another TV movie right here from a guy that went on 2010, living in his car, all the way to being with the Chicago White Sox and Major League Baseball, along the way, college baseball, high school baseball. I really believe, here's, here we go again, making a movie. We got to do it one day. So let's welcome Matt Lyle. What's up, buddy? The movie star. I think one day... Hey, Peter, good to see you. Thanks for having me on, man. No, are you kidding? Um, you're doing me the favor. Uh, you've really, uh, you know, in a short period, because I think it's been 14, 15 years, uh, maybe it's 18 years that you've been in the game. Um, but, you, you know, if, to me, that's still a short period. And, man, you've come a long ways. Uh, I got to ask you this, might as well. And we got guys joining us already. Matter of fact, Anthony I. Posey, Cubs major league hitting coach. Um, had him on last show. He's, he's waving, says hi. Um, you know, I know it's a, we're not, we're not going to get into your story because they can go into the, into the podcast from before, but you know, all these years, if you had to give advice to hang in there, stay with it. Um, what would that advice be for somebody that's in the game? Because you know, people are going to struggle. Um, you know, it's not going to be all fun and games along the way. What's your advice to some of those people, coaches out there? For me, it's really just about, you know, how bad do you want it? You know, I think that everybody I talk to says, you know, how do I get into college coaching? How do I get into pros? And when I tell them, hey, you know what? You've got to work a full-time job, maybe uh, work a graveyard shift 40, 50 hours a week, plus be a dad, plus, you know, uh, all these other things. And on top of that, you got to find time to coach and, and build your thing. So I think that the actual sacrifice that it takes – uh, most people, you know, get eliminated right from there. So, you know, for me, uh, as a kid growing up, you know, my dream was to be a major league baseball player. That didn't happen. I just, I've loved this game so much. And for me, it was really about just the coaches and men and people who poured into my life and spoke into my life that I wanted to be like those guys. And so for me, I just knew it was a calling. Like there was no other thing for me to do. I didn't want to do anything else. I want to coach. I want to make impact. I want to make significance in people's lives. So for me, even those days, like I said, I was homeless in my car eating tuna fish from Safeway. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, I just, I knew that's what I was called to do. And, I, and for me, I was going to do everything possible to do that. So I think it just has to be something that you are, you know, convicted to, to the point that, no, there's no other answer other than, you know, surviving it. And, folks, go back to baseballoutsidethebox.com. Check it out. June 7th, 2018 episode. you got to hear the whole story. Incredible. Um, all right. Before we start, we're going to get into softball and then mix it in with baseball and try to learn from each other here. Um, we, I say each other, from baseball to softball, softball to baseball. But i got to ask you, okay? Uh, now, guys, Matt is a speaker. He owns the Hitting Vault, one of the most successful what websites um, when it comes to you know all kinds of information videos and all that and we can talk about that um you know you're an author uh, but i gotta ask you you're also a businessman and you're pretty smart domingo ayala okay now he's got a ton of followers obviously i saw your series on domingo ayala and i gotta tell you it was really good uh tell me about it well, it was really fun. Back then, a couple of years ago, uh, I was working with Jock Peterson. I had worked with him off and on for a couple of years and was buddies with him. And and so we just came up with this idea, and I, I presented it to Jock and Domingo. I said, hey, let's do this funny video where I'm working with Jock, and, you know, you come in, and, and uh, you know, we're, we can't 
figure out this problem. We need Domingo to help us. And so, you know, they kind of played off each other. It was, it was all those guys doing it. And you, you can see how uh, acting is definitely not my gift. Uh, if you watch that video at all, but it was fun to do it and make it. And just, you know, for me, you know, the one thing my grandfather coached for 38 years in college and he, the thing that I always took from him was that coaching should be about fun. And, and so for me, you know, anytime I can get a project that's related to coaching baseball, it's fun. You know, I'm always trying to make, you know, fun things to do with it. So that was just a fun thing that we got to do. And, and I'm glad we got to do that. Absolutely. Did you pick up the baseballs and did you pay that invoice? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny is that that was all ad libbed. Uh, yeah, that was that wasn't scripted at all. So uh, it definitely, like we were like genuinely laughing. I gotta find some outtakes from that videos because Domingo literally like uh, ad libbed that whole thing. So we were just kind of trying to play off of him a little bit, and uh, it definitely was cracking me up. Well, you gotta have fun in this game because sometimes we get a little too serious and and yeah. talk about ad lib. That's what we're gonna be doing here. We ad lib. We don't. We have some idea where we want to go, but we're going to play off the questions. And here, here, here's where we really want to start. Um, uh, Matt Lyle, the routine that you have, you know, especially nowadays being indoors, and even though you can get a, get outside because you're in warm weather, what kind of routine do you have to make yourself better, to stay consistent, stay mentally focused in what you're trying to do all the time? Well, I, you know, for me, I realized, uh, you know, I've had some years being an entrepreneur, some years being a coach, that if I don't have a routine, I'm a mess. Like, I don't do well with just – you know, open canvas of the day. And so I've got to have this regimented routine of getting up at this certain hour. So, you know, I've made a deal with my wife a couple of years ago that scored me a ton of points. So if you're, if anybody's want to score some points at home, I <laughs> made a deal that I, I get up really early, like 5, 15, 5, 30. Wow. And I get up and I try to get some reading done or some emails and kind of get my day started. And I get up with our three youngest kids. I, I feed them, get them dressed so that my wife can have a little bit of uh uh, sleep time and, and so that's kind of my routine get the kids ready for school help them out in the mornings and then uh you know I, I i always try to work out in the morning uh for a while and so and then i get through my day with there's practice and meetings and the different things that i have but you know i try to go to bed at the same time i try to wake up at the same time you know when i coached at mizzou uh with coach beezer coach beezer um incredible routine guy he was in the office every morning at 7 30 doing his reading i mean he's such a regimented guy that when i felt like i was kind of getting off my routine you know I, I would i would kind of follow him and be like man this guy does not get off his routine he is to a t every day and it shows why he's had a lot of success in his career so for me i just know that if i map out my days and my routine really well of like hey i want to get this accomplished i'm gonna get my emails done i want to do some learning and i always try to find some time whether it's a half hour, an hour a day to uh, read. I, I do, uh, the game changer for me was Audible, listening to audiobooks mm -hmm. uh, in the car. So if I spend time in the car, I've cranked out a ton of books in the last couple of years because instead of listening to music, which I enjoy doing, uh, I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks. So for me, uh, I'm always trying to just learn a little bit more, spend some time learning. Well, everybody, if you want to learn, you got to go to Matt Lyle. Go on Twitter, at Coach Lyle. Unbelievable. But he's all over social media, so you can check him out. Also, his website, MattLyle.com. Check all that out. And we'll have it all on the show notes. Hey, listen, during these times, we've been in the house. Uh, you know, some people have a backyard, been able to go in the backyard. You've, you've got large following. I'm sure you've got a lot of people asking you, you know, what's my son and daughter? What can they do at home, in the backyard? You know, what, how do they stay sharp? How do they stay mentally prepared because the season could open up on any level. Not We're going to get into the college softball, but it can open up on any level. Some advice out there for, you know, the parents and the coaches and players, you know, what to do during these times. Yeah. So I'm, if it was, I, I always think about it from the perspective of my kids. So if my kids, you know, are, they're a teenager and, you know, they're saying, I get a lot of teenagers say, I want to play in college. I want to play in the pros. They say these things, but then you got to yell at them to get off the iPad or yell at them to stop playing the, the PlayStation <laughs> or Fortnite. So, to me, I always ask the kids, you know, you say you want to play college, but, you, you know, your parents got to uh, yell at you to get off the screen. So, you know, for me, I kind of challenge those kids. Hey, this is the only time uh, and hopefully in our lifetime that we have to deal with something like this where you're going to be home this often and you have the ability to really hone down on some skills and work on your game. And, and uh, you know, in my house with my eight-year-old son, he's he's addicted to the uh, to YouTube and uh, Nintendo Switch. And so, you know, we tr he earns screen time based on uh, chores and schoolwork and uh, activities. So I'm like, hey, if you want a half hour on that 
on that uh, Nintendo Switch, you got to go do a half hour of playing catch with dad or hitting Love off the key. And, and uh, you know, I definitely wish that he would uh, be self-motivated in some of that. But like you said, you know, for a lot of young kids, Nintendo Switch and YouTube is going to take precedence over some of that stuff. So you got to get creative with getting them out there. But for me, you know, I would just encourage uh, kids, teenagers and parents that, you know, this is a great time to take a break from the hustle and bustle of playing 150 travel ball games or high school games and this crazy schedule. And you, I think a lot of players, they want to work on something, whether it's pitch development, their swing. And they always say, like, oh, I'm going to do it in the offseason. I'm going to do it in the offseason. I'm going to do it. And then they put it off. This is the time. Like, if you're going to have any time to really uh, focus on something new, swing development wise, pitch development wise, this is a this is a great opportunity that you have. And so, uh, you know, I always I use the word challenge. I would challenge my student athletes to say, Hey, when you look at your day, you know, how many hours a day are you on Netflix and and YouTube <laughs> versus how many days you're in the backyard or the garage hitting? And I think when players actually look at what they're you know they're doing. It's different. Whereas you and I and, you know, a lot of our generation, I spent days throwing the tennis ball on a little line against a garage door or the, or the front, the front door and play wiffle ball in the backyard until my mom had to force me to come inside. You know, that's what we did all day long. Uh, You know, I'm the oldest of seven kids. And so um, me and my brothers would play wiffle ball in the front yard, backyard, you know, two hand football every day. And it's just, it's a different America uh, right now. And so, I just think that if we can find some fun ways, wiffle ball games with dad in the backyard, with mom in the backyard, to me, that'd be the best way to get him out there and working on it. Man, I know you're just, you know, you're, one of your specialties, obviously, is being a hitting coach, but you're, you're an all, all over coach. You could coach at any level, anywhere, anytime. Um, the, your players now at uh, Fresno State University, what's the communication like between your players and yourself? Uh, is it on internet? And what do you, you know, what are you discussing with them to get them also prepared is it very similar to what you just said or is it yeah it's it's you know we do we do a weekly zoom call with our players every week and we check in and then i probably facetime with almost half the team every day and uh using my you know facetime and we do we do group chats i'll i'll chat with the seniors one day i'll chat with uh, different groups that we have we make small groups and i do a lot of individual stuff too you know i think for college athletes right now you know you've got to really be careful because you know they worked all year long they worked all fall all spring to play these 55 games and they got ripped away from them halfway through and it's it's hard to be the to be the coach to say hey you know you got all this ripped away from you now go in the backyard and work on your swing uh you know and so you know i'm trying to have a little bit of grace and and during this time for me as a coach I'm spending most of my time talking to them, just building a relationship because, you know, as a coach in the regular season, in the fall, you know, we're with these players all day long and we get to know them the best we can, but we don't get a lot of opportunities like this where the world stops and we can spend. So, you know, we've been talking about, you know, this different shows, the Tiger King and all the different shows that are watching and, and getting to know them more about their families and stuff like that. So for me, it's probably been more about relationship building uh, with the student athletes than it is about, uh, hitting, but I think at the end of the day, you know, as a coach knows, the team culture and the type of relationship and trust you build with your athletes goes just as far as uh, you know taking a hundred swings off the tee. So, you know, I think that's for most coaches, if you can invest in building some relationship with your athletes, I think it's going to go a long way when things go back to normal. Are there some are there some players of yours that you know that uh, have the ability that you know they're hitting a little bit, whether it be in a cage or down, you know in the basement? And they do they do they use any technology so you could take a look at it? Is there anything of that going on right now? Yeah, absolutely. You know, all of our players have blast motion sensors, so they can always uh, you know text me, hey, is this, these numbers good, or can you watch this swing video? Uh, absolutely. You know, I, I still have some of my MLB guys that uh, still send me videos. They're working in the you know backyard, or they're 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 trying to kind of get ready for this possible season. And so you know, technology is an incredible use of. Uh, time where you can like again like you and I are chit chatting here face to face with video and players can set up the iPhone and the uh, FaceTime and say hey, coach I'm gonna take some swings off the tee what do you see I mean we have the ability to to have these live um, connections where we can talk through things and and it's incredible uh, that you know one of the advantages of 2020 is to be able to do that and it's it's pretty it's pretty cool Absolutely. I agree with you, man. The technology is awesome. And, you know, I saw just the other day uh, on another subject, they're actually cutting hair 
So what they're doing is the person has, you know, Skype or whatever, and the instructor teaches them how to cut the hair. I mean, you've got to be innovative during these times. Yeah, I, 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 I need to watch that. Send me the link of the video because <laughs> I, 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 every week I'm like, oh, man, I'm just going to shave my head. All right? I, 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 you know, I'm like, I'm scared to tell my wife to YouTube uh, how to give a haircut because I don't, I don't really trust her to do it. So uh, that's, that's one of the topics that I've been uh, interested in is how do I cut my hair during this time? That, that's going to be valuable, no doubt about it. It went from toilet paper to cutting hair. Yep. <laughs> Listen, my experience in softball, I'm going to give it to you real fast. It takes two seconds. Um, I was in Belgium as a baseball coach and national team. I started playing some softball, and they put me on a team, and all of a sudden I'm playing the Dutch. The Dutch are like six-something. I'm trying to hit off of these guys. You know, the ball's coming 100 miles an hour. That's one experience. Two, it, with women in baseball, I, I did a tryout with USA Baseball, and, and and then after that, some lessons in the old days that we used to give to softball players once in a while. I loved that. I'm not sure why I didn't stick in the softball or women's baseball area, um, but what I got to ask is, how was the, you know, you had a transition somewhere from baseball to softball, softball to baseball. How was that transition? Um, you know, it was really interesting. So in, in, to make the story short, 2012, I was coaching high school baseball, trying to get into college coaching baseball, trying to get my name out there. And I was doing some bird dog scouting for the Tigers and just tr couldn't get a job anywhere. I, I, never, I didn't really play uh, much college, never played the pros. I didn't have a ton of connections in college. And uh, my high school season got done. And I, I've never watched softball before other than just a little bit here and there. And I watched the entire postseason off from my couch in 2012, May 2012. And I decided to send my resume out to every single Division One softball coach in the country. I'm like, you know what? This softball thing is really cool. It's a fun sport. It's fast-paced. It's a lot like you – know, and I, I kind of really fell in love with it over this two-week period of watching postseason. And next thing you know, I got like – 30, 40 emails from D1 softball coaches saying, hey, you know, we might be interested in having you as a volunteer assistant coach or have, you know, as assistant. And uh, next thing you know, I'm the hitting coach at the University of Oregon. And uh, my softball career kind of took off from there. And, and I've, I've been in it for about seven, eight years. And I've gone back and forth from baseball to softball. You know, people ask me, you know, which one's better and all these things. But, uh, you know, I, I just love coaching student athletes and, are, you know, working with working with hitters. So for me, uh, I love both the sports and, and they both have, you know, awesome, uh, awesome things about it. You know, and the one thing I really do like about it is very fast paced. Everything happens quick. And I think yeah. people are interested. Um, what about, you know, this is my comment now. You know, I always found that in that short period of time that I was with women in softball, very short. I found that that one, it was a little easier to coach them, but two, they listened a lot better. Am I off on that? Yeah. I would say, you know, I think everyone's experience is different. I've been coaching 19 years. I've done about 12, 13 in baseball and seven, eight in softball. And I would say the biggest difference in my experience has been that coaching uh, female student athletes and just in general, they definitely have what I would call more of a posture of learning. And they, mm -hmm. they, they have this, um, for the most part, you know, they, they want to learn, they're willing to listen. It's, it's a little bit easier to, to break down the buy-in a little bit. I mean, I still think you get, we still get a lot of like, well, my hitting coach teaches me this. Well, my dad told me to do this. Uh, <laughs> you know, you get that in both sports, but I think, like I said, in my experience, uh, the posture of learning has been uh, greater than it has in baseball, whereas in baseball, um, I think that the buy-in and the pushback is a little bit uh, more, depending on the people. And, and I also think it, it goes, you know, as my career has gone, baseball, I feel like, you know, 10 years ago, high school kids, I couldn't get them to listen to me. And now – because of the, you know, the career that I've had, it, it, the buy-in is a lot less because, you know, you have some credit, I have some credibility, I guess you could say, but in general, in my experience, yes, uh, female athletes, uh, they are, they, they listen a little bit better, they're a little bit more coachable. Uh, and, uh, I, I would definitely agree with that. Well, I, I believe that they also listen because I believe your last university, um, you guys, I don't know if you led the country in hitting or you did really well. I mean, that, that shows a lot what you can do with how you can help young players. Yeah, the University of South Carolina, I think we led the SEC in like every category, uh, offensive category for, for conference play. And, and I think that, you know, the thing about um, softball that I really, really enjoy is that um, they have, you know, the ceiling of most softball players 
is much higher than where they're at right then and there. At least, like I said, in all the years I have been. And so they have they, they have the ability to make these huge jumps where a lot of Division One baseball players and MLB guys that I've worked, they, you know, they're not uh, they, their ceiling is not that much higher than where they're at. You know, they're, they, they, some of them have a bigger ceiling, but in softball, I have seen players that have been overlooked by many uh, coaches or like, you know, maybe they're they're They haven't had a great year the year before, you know, have, have had incredible jumps. I, I can remember my, my, one of my first years ever in softball, I worked with this girl who as her junior year had one home run and uh, for the whole year. And I'm looking at her like, man, this girl should have way more than that. And the year that I coached there, she hit 13 home runs, led the conference in home runs with the same amount of at-bats. And it was just like, this is, and you can see like softball, you can make these jumps from one to 13 home runs in a year. Uh, and I just, I've seen bigger jumps in softball than I have uh, in baseball across the board. Very interesting. Listen, you mentioned uh, uh, in softball is like baseball, I think. Where you know you've got all the travel teams, you've got different coaches, you got parents telling them things. You know how do you cipher through that stuff when a when a player mentions to him, my my private hitting instructor is doing this or my dad told me this or whatever it may be? How do you work through those? Yeah, I'll tell you, it's it for me. It's a it's a huge maturity uh, change. I'll tell you, my when I used to coach high school baseball ten years ago, twelve years ago. If a, if a player came to me and said that, I'd say, well, it's my way or the highway. You know, uh, you know, I'm your hitting coach while you're here. And so you have to listen to me. Now, my approach as I've, you know, uh, be, hopefully become more mature uh, is that I have the conversation. OK, you know, what what are they what are they teaching you? Let's have that conversation. Or my dad's my hitting coach. I, I'm more than happy to inv invite them in, you know, every year. Uh, at a school that I've been at, the very first meeting that I have at South Carolina, at Mizzou, at Fresno State, I've said the very first meeting, uh, the number one rule with me is that you can always call BS. You can always call BS on me. Uh, it, it's never my way or the highway. So if I say something that doesn't resonate with you, you just need to come to see, hey, coach, my hitting coach told me this. My dad taught me this. I, I don't really understand that. And by allowing them to call BS at any time, other than probably in the middle of practice would be would, is not the best time, but <laughs> if they're allowed to call BS, we can sit down and have the conversation. Like, hey, you know what? My my dad told me not to drop my back shoulder or whatever the thing is that they believe. And now we can sit through and talk with it. And, and that approach has got me what much, much further than, you know, don't listen to your hitting coach or don't listen to your dad or, you know, uh, whatever approach I see a lot of coaches have. I, I invite it in. Let's talk about it. Let's let's talk about what you're uh, what what you're against. And and I would say 99 percent of the time. I get them on my page in, in a willing way so that they that they are on the same page. You know, I love that, the open communication. Um, uh, you know, here's uh, – and if you see Skype go in and out, it'll come in and out once in a while. Coach Lyle, you still there? I can hear you. Okay. I think we got a visual uh, – Yeah, I've, visual. Lost, I've, lost, uh, I've lost the video feed of you a, a little bit, but I can definitely still see you. Okay. Or hear you at least. You still there? Um, I lost you. 